Hello. Have you heard about wool pressing mats or somebody's talked about them and you've wondered what's what's the big deal? Why do I need a pressing mat? If so, stick around. Hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney and I'm here to teach you that quilting does not need to be intimidating. It can be fun. You can start small. And so if you have an interest, stay tuned, subscribe to my channel and you'll discover the joy of quilting and how much joy it can bring to your life. I only recently got a wool pressing mat. I'd heard about them or whatever and I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Do I really need this in my supplies? Then I went to a quilt retreat and somebody had a wool um, pressing mat there. So we used it all weekend. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I came home and decided, hmm, I think I need one of those. So I did. So I went and I bought this one. This one is by Ohoco, O-H-O-C-O, and it's uh, 17 by 24. Um, there are a ton of sizes out there. So depending on how you want to use it, you can figure out which one is best for you. I basically went out and did a little research on figuring out which one I should get because I didn't know. And the prices range quite a bit. And since I was just getting started with it, I didn't want to spend a fortune on it. So I found a site on Google that showed like the top 10 wool mats and the prices varied quite a bit. So I found one that matched the price point I was willing to pay and had a good rating and I could get it on Amazon. So there you go. So don't get too uptight or thinking that you have to spend a lot to get one. And if you want to start with a smaller one, it's even going to be less. So, why a wool pressing mat? Well, they're heat resistant. They don't melt. They don't burn. Yeah, I don't know about you, but the silver covering that's on top of your ironing board, well, eventually it kind of wears out. And if you happen to use a lot of steam in your iron, it gets kind of icky and mine gets browned. And yeah, here's what mine looks like today. Yeah, yuck. And it gets tears in it. It needs to be replaced. Let's face it, it does. Which is why I'm now using my wool pressing mat actually on top of my ironing board, which is why I got the size that I did. Um, the key thing is, as I mentioned, it retains heat. So the more you use it during your, your day or your quilting session, the warmer it becomes on top and it's reflecting the heat back. So essentially you're pressing on both the top and the bottom of your fabric. The thing that really sold me when we were using it at Quilt Retreat is how nice my seams were pressed. The wool pressing mat does have a, it's firm, it's firm, but it has a little give. So between the fact that you're pressing and you're heating from the bottom and the top, and you've got that little give, it just makes my seams really, really nice. Essentially, that's why I got it. Um, the other interesting thing that I've discovered, though, is it your fabric doesn't move around. I mean, on those silver ironing board covers, well, they're kind of slippery. So if you're like me, I don't just you know, press like, well, like we're supposed to. I kind of iron. And so you kind of move it around. And well, your fabric is going to stick to your pressing mat. Yep, it sticks. Kind of cool, which means a lot of times when you're using heat and especially if you're using steam, the fibers in your fabric loosen up. Therefore, when you're pressing, they have a tendency to possibly stretch out, especially if you're working on the bias. So with the wool pressing mat and it keeping your fabric, you know, tied, I don't know what the right word I want to use, um, sticking, to your pressing mat where you're supposed to, you're less likely to get the um, the warping, the stretching in your fabric that you, you possibly could with your regularly regular ironing board. Um, the half inch thickness is what I would recommend. It's nice and thick. It, um, yeah, then it lets more of the heat in your, your pressing mat come off the top. Um, and it's good for using pins with. So you could, if you needed to, if you had something that you wanted to block, block, so you press it, you, you, you get it where you want, and you put pins in it. Now, quilting, 
Ah, I don't have, think I've ever had a case where I've wanted to block something, but blocking is very common for knitters or, or um, crocheters. My grandmother would crochet doilies or little angels, and she would be much more likely to um, have it spray starched and then pin it and ironing it and wanting it to stay put and blocked um, until it dried. So it's very handy for that. Um, one downside that people will notice, I actually didn't with the one that I purchased, is the smell. A lot of people complain, oh, it smells so bad, is that going to go away? Well, wool is a natural fiber and it's got lanolin in it and yeah, you may have a smell in it. If you do and it really bothers you, get a spray bottle, fill it with some water and some um, uh, softener, fabric softener and spray it on your mat. Your pressing mat is made of wool. It's already been felted. So you're gonna probably be using a lot of steam with it. So obviously it's safe to use water on it. And, and my, little, my little guy Charlie decided to join me right now. <laughs> so it's okay to have water on it. So spritz, spritz your you know, water softener that has a nice smell to it and hopefully that will help alleviate that. And on the topic of it being water resistant, the other thing is, if you're a person that uses spray starch a lot, um, or the smell or whatever, or you feel the need, you know, to clean it, it's washable. And no, do not throw it in the washing machine, but you can take a bowl of water and then a really nice, natural, uh, gentle soap uh, you definitely don't need a lot. And then just get a towel and um, wipe off your mat. You can wipe it off on the top and bottom. So if you're using spray starch when you iron and you feel like, wow, wow, I mean, it's, it's maybe gotten a little bit too much on your pressing mat, go ahead and get it washed off. That can also help with the smell. Um, so here's the other thing. You don't want to do what I'm doing right now. I've got my pressing mat sitting on top of my cutting mat. No, 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 don't do that. Um, a lot of people have commented that when they're pressing, um, it's, it's heat resistant and it reflects the heat and they'll lift it up and go, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not hot under there. Very true, very true. But when we were pressing and using the uh, pressing mat a lot at Quilt Retreat, basically we had, um, steam in iron the whole time and somebody was almost continually at the ironing board within minutes of each other so it was being used like eight to twelve hours that day when we went to leave and we picked up the cutting mat sorry not the cutting mat the pressing mat it was like oops there was a big brown water stain underneath it Luckily, we were we had the pressing mat on top of a uh, wood uh, ironing board that had been um, that had muslin on top of it. So no damage. They could take that off and wash it. But it just goes to show, depending on how much you're using that, it can impact what you're setting it on. So please don't put your pressing mat on your cutting mat for sure. You could warp it with the heat or the steam not a good idea and don't put it on any furniture or something that if something went through and it damaged it that you would be very very unhappy so um i used mine on top of my ironing board the other thing is i was thinking that okay my mom has always had these um uh <laughs> man a gap a table Wow, I'm completely gapping on the word I want. Um, they're plastic on top and they're flannel on the bottom and tablecloth. Wow, I guess I don't use the word tablecloth very much around here. <laughs> it's a plastic tablecloth with like, like felt a little on the bottom. Inexpensive. I'm guessing you could probably still get them, but those would be very good things to put underneath your... Um, your wool pressing mat if it's somewhere that you want to be ultra ultra cautious about. So there you have it with that. So here's the other thing. A lot of people get these 
because they want them to be portable. They want to be able to take a pressing mat with them to a quilt retreat um, or have them sitting next to them while they sew. So some people they sew and then they want a, um, a pressing mat right next to them by the sewing machine. Well, when I went to quilt retreat, I had created my own. This is just a TV tray, flexible TV tray. And what did I do? <laughs> this is going to be funny. I basically got the ironing board fabric. So I put batting, uh, ironing board fabric, and then I just stapled it around the top. So essentially this was the iron board. This is the ironing board, if you will, that I bring with me to quilt retreat. If I'm doing something where uh, <clears throat> I want to um, have a personal ironing board right there with me. So then you could get a wool pressing mat that fits right on top of that. So you don't even need to cover it. You could just set your pressing mat on top of it. This pressing mat that I have is too big for that. So if I decide I want to do that, I will have to buy a smaller one. This size works really well on my ironing board when I'm pressing my dish towels, which I machine embroider a lot of them and they need to be washed. Well, they're cotton, so they're pretty wrinkly when they come out and then also pressing blocks and things. When I'm going to press larger pieces of fabric, then this size is a little small. And then I revert back to my standard ironing board. I've got a kind of an ironing board table. So in the future, I might end up getting a larger pressing mat if I decide I want to do that. Um, other than that, I want to make sure I covered everything with you. Da, 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 da. I think I did this time because I missed it on the last time. Um, so yeah, they're, they're handy. They're portable. They're easy. You can have them next to you. I personally, when I sew, I like to get up and go iron or come over here and cut. I feel like I sit all day on the computer. So for me, I need to get my steps in. A quilting, <laughs> actually I can get quite a bit of steps in. But if you like it next to you, these are perfect to have next to you, next to your sewing machine on a TV tray. Um, it's, they really are nice. I'm very glad that I made the purchase and I do feel that it helps, helps my seams press out a lot faster, flatter. <laughs> there you go. So you can decide whether you're going to get a wool pressing mat or not. So please let me know in the comments if you've decided to get one or if you have one and you love it, or I don't know, maybe you found you really, really don't like it. People might understand why it's not a good fit for them. So let me know. Take care and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video today. You can follow me by doing one, subscribing to this YouTube channel, hitting the bell icon on the subscribe button so you're notified every time I drop a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, Wendy J. Haney. So facebook.com slash Wendy J. Haney. Also, I have a Facebook group for people that love needlework, books, wine, all sorts of things also. The name of the group is called Life Fulfilled Quilting Needlework Wine. Basically, you can't miss it. It's facebook.com slash group slash life fulfilled. You'll be able to find it. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate all your comments and feedback that you're providing me. Take care.